I'm pretty sure that you would have seen a curve like this while you're preparing for your CAT examination and your background research on what to study, how much to score, etc. to score 90 percentile, 95 percentile, 99 percentile, etc. While this graph is not factually incorrect, there's a problem with the x-axis. It does not, it's not a uniform x-axis. Right? A better curve would have been something like this, which will show you the amount of effort which is required to improve your scores in the uh, in the QA section and across any other section in the CAT examination. In fact, almost all the scores will look something like this in terms of distribution and uh, in terms of marks and percentiles, etc. Just like with our coronavirus curve, where we have tried to flatten the curve as much as possible here, the curve which you are flattening is the wrong curve because the y-axis is the percentile that you score. So after a point of time, even though you score more and more marks, the percentile increase is not uniform. So in this session, we would actually be looking at what should be the order in which you should study, especially the math section. What are the areas that you can safely skip without regretting later on in the examination? And what is the realistic target that you can set to yourself in terms of how much you should study to increase your marks by n number of marks? While you're here, you can send us your queries on our email ID. You can also leave your comments on our YouTube channel. You can send us uh, your queries through WhatsApp or on our Telegram group. Uh, we also get queries on uh, Quora. All the links are available in the description of this video. Please do share this with your friends if you like, uh, like it and find it informative. Uh, we are also running a poll on our YouTube channel right now on what all will be the next topics to cover for the, in the QA section in the explainer series. You can participate on that as well. Let's begin with this session. If you were to roughly break it down in terms of marks versus percentile across the last three cats, right? Uh, the question paper is completely available online. It's publicly available. Uh, we have put out the solutions for the QA and the LRDI section as well. Uh, you can watch our YouTube uh, videos for that. Uh, this is the raw score versus percentile. And the last three cats in terms of the QA has been pretty much all over the place. We have had a very difficult CAT in CAT 2018. We had a very easy CAT in CAT 2017. And we had a moderate sort of CAT in CAT 2019, which is somewhere in between 2018 and 2017. Now, if you observe carefully, uh, the score required at 99.5 percentile is roughly double the score required at 90 percentile. Right? Uh, so, you need to put as much effort to reach from 99 to 99.5 as you had to reach from 90 to uh, from a 50 to a 90 or from a 0 to a 90. In fact, 0 to 90 is reasonably achievable, right? And that should be the first target. Most colleges have a cutoff at either 80 percentile or 90 percentile when it comes to the sectional one. So it'll be pretty stupid if you miss out on that sectional cutoff, given that the cutoffs are just about 10 to 12 questions. Now, this also tells you that you should be careful about what you wish for. If you wish for too easy a CAT paper, remember the paper is easy for everyone, right? So you need to score more and more and more in order to gain or reach a higher percentile. If you look at the statistics for CAT 2019, uh, a score of 67 in CAT 2019 would give you only a 98 percentile. Whereas the same score will give you a 99.5 percentile in CAT 2019. Similarly, if you look at a score of uh, scores of CAT 2018, which is a pretty difficult paper, right? It is roughly about five to seven marks lesser than the moderate paper for the same percentile category, right? And as you rise up and uh, more and more in the percentile levels, the amount that you need to score extra to gain that extra percentile point becomes more and more and more. Now, about three to four years ago, when the CAD paper was not released, a lot of people were fooled into believing that they have to solve numbers only or permutation and combination questions only. But over the last two to three years, I have seen students become very mature when it comes to understanding what the CAD paper looks like. Right? This is a broad idea of where the CAT tests. 
right uh, now throughout this uh, segments we will actually be talking about what i have included in the arithmetic portion what i have included in the algebra portion what i have included in the modern maths and numbers part uh, may not be the same as what you would normally see it in a lot of books i have tried to group related topics together i'll discuss this throughout this series but if you look at it arithmetic contains roughly about 40% of your uh cat paper if you add algebra and geometry together that's another 40 to 45% so between algebra arithmetic and geometry you have close to 25 24 to 25 questions out of the 34 questions in the quant section right and if you add progressions and indices search and log progressions is usually clubbed in the modern math section and numbers uh usually contain the indices search logarithm part if you add those questions as well another 3 to 4 questions you would see as many as 30 25 29 to 30 questions in each slot can we uh put up in these areas itself so initially you might think and it's actually a pretty practical strategy to neglect numbers and modern maths the non progressions part uh, all together now what should be a realistic target for the next Three to four months, or whenever the next cat is going to come up, uh, one of the most frequently asked questions on Quora and even on our YouTube channel is, "Can I hit a ninety-nine point five percentile in the next three to four months?" Right? If you're starting from absolute zero, right? It's pretty realistic that you can improve your raw scores by about ten to twelve marks for every three to four weeks of effort. i mean concentrated effort 3 to 4 weeks you can increase it reasonably comfortably so to hit an from 0 to 90 it will take you about 3 3 and a half months time if you add another month you will probably reach about 94 95 watt percentile that is a achievable a very probable target but a lot of people ask can i reach a 99.5 percentile or above in 3 or 4 months time now nothing is impossible right but if you are starting from absolute scratch right i would say it's most likely improbable it's almost impossible to reach that and we have seen that score chart if you want any further reconfirmation over there but that should not deter you from improving your score as much as possible right if you were to plan the order in which you study for every 3 to 4 weeks you should be able to reach a 90 to 95 by say november pretty easily right the first cluster that you should look at would be algebra progressions indices search logarithm i've clubbed these three together pretty high scoring roughly about 8 to 10 marks 8 to 10 questions right even if you attempt 50% of them you should be able to gain another 12 to 15 marks pretty easily right 3 to 4 weeks time pretty easy wins to work with the next one is geometry functions coordinate geometry and graph when i mean functions i'm looking at all those graphical based functions which are there there is some amount of functions which i've clubbed in algebra as well i'll discuss that a little bit in more detail in the rest of this series but the next big chunk is geometry functions coordinate geometry and graphs right this will take you sometimes even more than 4 months or uh, 4 weeks because sometimes geometry can be a little bit intimidating again it requires some amount of practice you need to be in constant touch for you to be able to do it it's a pretty vast area but at the same time it's a very scoring area this chunk will give you another 10 to 12 marks pretty easily and pretty quickly obviously as you keep practicing more and more your scores will keep on increasing as well the last chunk that you should look at would be pnc trigonometry probability and all the miscellaneous areas now if you observe carefully i have left out numbers and arithmetic now you are saying that i should leave arithmetic all together no i'm not saying that see numbers and arithmetic have applications across all these areas right and if you keep on just doing arithmetic problems you are going to get bored very easily right there are about 13 to 14 questions which come up from the arithmetic section and you cannot be doing the same thing again and again honestly speaking the entire arithmetic contains of just three or four three or four relations you convert a ratios to or a ratios and fractions to a percentage you know how to manage variation or proportionality and how to use that in areas of time speed distance and time and work simple interest component interest etc average mixtures allegations basically you should be able to get comfortable with arithmetic but if you just keep at arithmetic you will not be able to complete the arithmetic syllabus second you will get really bored because you are using the same type of concept again and again 
and lastly you're not going to show a very massive improvement in a short period of time which is possible in something like an algebra or a geometry a geometry is in fact a lot of uh, knowledge based sort of things right same happens with numbers you will be using numbers properties of numbers etc throughout the parts like for example there might be questions on algebra which might have the roots of an equation as odd numbers or prime numbers or composite numbers so you might you will have to know the basic properties of numbers sequences in a series will require you to know the sum of the first n natural numbers squares of the first n natural numbers cubes of the first n natural numbers some amount of algebra will require you to use lcm hcf etc as well so both of them should go hand in hand this will also make sure that you don't forget anything i mean it's very easy to forget numbers and arithmetic because most people they start it out initially and then they completely leave it all together so my aim my suggestion would be when we look at the full arithmetic plan is basically divide your arithmetic as well as numbers into continuous learning throughout your cat uh, preparation window it doesn't matter whether you have not completed arithmetic or numbers completely it is very unlikely that you will complete it 100% but at the same time don't be worried too much if you keep at it you are in constant touch with arithmetic and numbers your improvement will come automatically and given the weightage of arithmetic you will automatically see your scores rising as as you gain confidence in the other areas as well so what are the areas that i can skip without regretting now if you were to look at a simple rule of thumb while i'll give you guidelines for each particular test area later on in the series if you were to look at a direct rule or if i were to give you a rule of which are the areas to skip the easiest rule to tell you will be anything which requires a direct formula which you have not heard of before in standard 10th mathematics i know a lot of you are non engineers a lot of you might might not be in touch with your mathematics etc but even if you have never heard of something earlier even with your vague recollection of mathematics chances are that it's not going to be asked in the cat examination or it is not going to have a direct use in the cat examination i'm not saying that these theories are bad these are pretty interesting stuff but the people who should do it who should be scoring about 98 99 percentile already and they want to do a faster way of scoring more or they are getting exhausted so they want to learn something extra so things like the ladder theorem the mass point geometry in mathematics that is something which a lot of people spend a lot of time learning and giving up on geometry altogether don't do that sin half half of a sin angle half of a cos angle the half angle formula etc in trigonometry leave it base theorem etc and probability leave it if you don't like inequalities we have done a lot of explainer series on inequalities look at that integer parts people do it using formulas etc you can spend one more extra minute in the question max and actually solve it just by substituting the values as such right so anything which requires a direct use of formula is not going to come up in the cat examination and you can easily skip it initially once you gain confidence in that particular area you can easily add add it to your armor later on that completes this particular part of uh, what to prepare for cat quant section i would be adding more videos on what are the things which you should study for arithmetic algebra geometry numbers uh modern maths etc in more detail and what are the things which you should actually study and you can things which you can skip uh comfortably in the next few days before i leave i would suggest please do vote on the poll which is going on on our youtube channel so that we know what are the next things to cover in the quant explainer series that completes this session on the quant explainers if you liked this video please do share this with your friends who are preparing for cat and other mba entrance examination please do subscribe to our youtube channel you can uh, join our whatsapp list and telegram groups the link is available in the description of this video if you have any queries you can uh, post it on our quora page or our, on our facebook page on our youtube channel comments or send an email to us or contact us through whatsapp we will try to answer all those queries as much as possible till we meet again the next time stay safe and all the best